the crypto ecosystem, but the one uh, certain element of the ecosystem is Bitcoin is universally acclaimed to be a global commodity or an asset without an issuer. Mm -hmm. So the one thing we can count on is uh, Bitcoin goes forward in the year 2024, and a strategy built around Bitcoin is generally a pretty safe one for institutions. We welcome fair value accounting. It's going gonna, it's gonna to create much more transparency and clarity and P&Ls and balance sheets for any companies that are holding Bitcoin. I think the real significance is that there are companies like Berkshire Hathaway and Apple Computer that have $100 billion plus in cash. And right now they have to invest it in treasuries and sovereign debt. And with this change in fair value accounting, you're going to have a commodity that's valued in, uh, as fair value, and it, it becomes a legitimate treasury reserve asset for publicly traded companies. You know, the, we're going through a digital transformation of everything. Apple represents a digital transformation of telephones and, and cameras, and Google's the transformation of books and libraries. Bitcoin represents a digital transformation of capital. 99.9% .9 of the capital in the world is tied up in real estate and stocks and precious metals and bonds. And so we're 0.1% transformed. Uh, people, as they get educated on digital assets, are realizing that they ought to be allocating more and more of their capital to this digital asset. And so they're moving from 0.1% to 0.2%. And, and uh, I think uh, that's really driving the trend. It's I I've said before, if Bitcoin's not going to zero, it's going to a million. The real question is, is it legitimate asset? If it's a legitimate institutional asset, everybody is under allocated to it. They're all factors. Education makes a difference. Institutional adoption makes a difference. The spot ETF news is good news. Uh, you know, loosening of monetary policy is good news. Inflation anywhere in the world drives Bitcoin adoption. And of course, the halving is going to cut the available supply of Bitcoins for sale in half from the miners. And so we've got a, a confluence of very bullish milestones over the next six months. And I think uh, smart money is uh, investing into that ahead of it. You know, people uh, focus on mining pools, but the actual mining is taking place in Bhutan and in Argentina and South America and Texas and Europe and Iceland and Africa, everywhere in the world. And so the miners themselves are very decentralized. They'll remain decentralized because they're chasing after power that's effectively marginally free. And uh, the pools, they will uh, accumulate hash rate from time to time, but they don't really have the power. The power is sitting next to a geothermal or or a hydroelectric project somewhere in the world. What's up, money talkers? We've got the latest scoop on the crypto roller coaster. Smash that like button, subscribe, and let's dive into the wild world of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's making moves crawling close to $43,000 after a pit stop at $40,500. That's a 4.3% gain in 24 hours. And we're currently riding the BTC wave at $42,930. The crypto streets are buzzing with excitement. Whale alert! Bitcoin's got its whales in a frenzy. Whale transactions, those big money moves of $100,000 or more, skyrocketed by 114% in just 24 hours. We're talking from 6,153 to a hopping 13,153 unique transactions. And guess what? Bitcoin's total open interest is flexing too, up from $7.07 .07 billion to $7.31 billion. It's like a crypto drama unfolding and we're here for it. Crypto banter on YouTube is stirring the pot, predicting a possible Bitcoin dump. Leverage rates, meme coins, and airdrops got the market looking like a spicy meme. But wait, there's hope on the horizon. U.S. Bitcoin AFE approvals could be the superhero we need. Trillion-dollar companies might swoop in and we're all waiting for that bullish sign. But the crypto games begin. Bitcoin's dance of around $40,000 has the SEC on high alert. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is gearing up for a make-or-break decision on a physically-backed Bitcoin ATF. The question on everyone's mind, will they, won't they? Enter Nate Jurassi, our crypto fortune teller. He's predicting a market earthquake if the SEC gives the thumbs down to the spot Bitcoin ETF in January. It could be one of the crypto history books, a rub pull of epic proportions. But Nate's got his bets on that approval, almost 100% sure. The plot thickens. Bitcoin is on a bullish symphony, hitting $45,000 for the first time since 2022. RK Investment, 21 shares, and the gang are pushing for that ETF approval, and the crypto streets are alive with optimism. Big players like BlackRock, Invesco, and Fidelity are suiting up the crypto showdown. 
Bloomberg Intelligence says we could be looking at a $100 billion spot Bitcoin AEF market. Are we witnessing the institutionalization of Bitcoin, the golden child of the crypto family? Now let's continue our discussion with Michael Saylor. Over a long enough timeline. You know, over a hundred years, just about every government fails, every bank fails. You know, I, I challenge you to figure out where you could have actually kept gold or owned a building in the last 150 years where you wouldn't have been wiped out by war or famine or flood or earthquake or collapse or something. So buying Bitcoin doesn't solve this problem, but what it does mean is that every three months or every year, you can reevaluate all your risk and you can move the Bitcoin into a different uh, counterparty setting because it's not a building, it's not a bar of gold. You can move the Bitcoin in an hour. So you should have a periodic health check. First question, do you trust yourself? I'm not joking, do you trust yourself? When you're 75 years old and your hands are shaky and your eyes fail, and maybe you've got early onset Alzheimer's, you really wanna trust yourself with your private keys? Do you trust yourself? Do you try, you know, every time you get in an Uber or a taxi cab and someone's driving you, you're trusting them with your life. If they drive you into a bridge and they kill you and you've got the keys in your head, what happens to your family, right? So you have to ask, ask yourself the question, do you trust yourself? Do you trust your family? Do you want to share your keys with the rest of your family, with two of them, three of them? Do you trust your three-year-old child? Obviously not. You know, do you trust your 90-year-old great-grandparent, you know, that's in the hospital, you know, with cancer, with the private keys? Do you trust your friends? Do you trust your trustees? You got to ask these questions. Who do you trust? Do you trust your bank, your vendor, your hardware wallet provider, the crypto exchange? The stock exchange, do you trust your customers? Do you trust your employees? Do you trust your local government, your state government, the federal government? Who do you trust? It's going to change. If you trust somebody now, like I tell you, like maybe I trust myself right now, but I might not trust myself in 30 years, right? I certainly wouldn't trust a one-year-old child in my family with the keys to the car or the keys to the Bitcoin. So. You got to think about it and this changes. Maybe when your son or daughter is 25, you're going to trust them with the keys. Maybe you won't trust them when they're 18. You have to have systemic checks and balances. Who else is watching over your assets? Do you trust the watchdogs? It's valuable if you know that there's a lot of very well-educated people that are very motivated to make sure that no one loses the asset or, you know, there are certain countries where you might want to trust your assets. You know, probably my stocks are are more trustworthy in New York City than if my stocks were trading in a war zone in Asia or in you know in a country in Africa that was just toppled with a coup. So use common sense, right? Ask yourself the question: Are you alone, or do you have powerful allies that share your interests? How transparent are your counterparties? MicroStrategy is a publicly traded company. We publish thousands of pages of financial disclosures. You know, if you have Bitcoin with a public company versus a private company, you're probably safer with a public company than a private company, right? You're safer, you know, you're safer with a big, well-regulated company than you are with, um, you know, with three people that started up a startup, you know, in the middle of a random country. So you have to ask the question, Will they fail gracefully? How transparent are they? If you look at the tragedies in Bitcoin for the past year and a half, people made the right decision to buy Bitcoin and then they trusted it with BlockFi or Celsius or Voyager or FTX or on Genesis. And they trusted counterparties that were private companies that were opaque, that were not transparent. And at the end of the day, uh, the people running those country companies failed them and the companies failed them. And, you know, I, I think the Bitcoin maximalist community would say, not your keys, not your coin, but it doesn't solve, it doesn't answer all the nuanced questions, which is, you know, well, if I keep my keys, do I use a hardware wallet, a hardware wallet from whom do I use multi-signature? Who has the other key? Who has the other signature? Where do I store it? If I store it in a bank or in a bank vault, can I get to it? 
you know, do I tell somebody else in my family or not? You know, do I give it to my accountant? Do I not? There's a lot of questions and you can get failed by any number of counterparties. So that's not that simple. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more daily updates. Remember, knowledge is power and we're here to empower you on your financial journey. Until next time, happy investing.